The very first race of the Molson Group Cycars for 2023. And what a grid we have here at Alton Park. It's been a long time getting to the grid because we had dreadful weather yesterday and what should have been the opening, opening race didn't happen at all. So what can the Christies do? They were in form last year. They brought that form into practice and qualifying. The lights go out and away they go. Todd Ellis on the far side, but it's Christie's. And right there, charging through behind them, the number 29 of Kershaw and Charbon. Those were the top three. Where's Tim Reeves? Looking for Tim Reeves. He'll be there on the Bonovo Action One in fourth place. In fourth place, Jed stuck four fingers up to me. I'm glad he wasn't in second. Quite rightly, Barry. Quite rightly. Tim's off to a great start there. And uh, as are the Chrissy boys, are really maintaining their lead. But Todd's certainly looking to get up the inside uh, with his French passion there, Emmanuel Clement. And in the air from Tim Reeves, there he is. There is Tim Reeves on the Bonovo action. But at the front, it's Sam, Tom, Christie, Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clermont tucked in behind. A good start, yeah, a bit of, bit of hand-waving here. Have we got Reeves in trouble already on the opening lap? It looks rather like it. He's had pressurised oil problems, so it's been blowing the oil out. There, yeah, that's it. It's game over on the opening lap. In fact, smoke already for Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes. That's not a good scenario. Definitely not. It's a shame to see. Uh, and also, as we were going around uh, Shell Oils there, I believe that was, uh, in fact, Adam Christie, who's on with uh, Rupert Archer, also had his hand up. Yeah, Adam Christie, the uh, third of the Christie brothers, a twin in actual fact, and injured his ankle two seasons ago. Used to ride with Sam, the elder brother, in the number three, oh, 34. The, what a shame. What a sad, sad weekend. I was so looking forward to seeing Tim Reeves back here. Multiple world champion, multiple British champion. But at the front, we have got a race on our hands. The, uh, these are the three outfits that were separated by two tenths of a second. It was so close. And haven't the Christies raised their game? They really have. I mean, to be ahead of uh, our reigning British and world champions at this moment. Uh, and again, our former champions in uh, Stephen Kershaw and Ryan Charlwood there, who uh, we've never actually raced here together, Barry, unlike the two pairings ahead. That's an interesting stat. No, I mean, we, we saw Kershaw dip out of the championship a few times, and, uh, well, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Christie, then, look at Kershaw. Kershaw having a look on the inside of Todd Ellis. Yamaha, Yamaha, Yamaha. All our sixes. But these are all in the GP class, so you would expect the GP class. Leader of the F2s, Pete Founds and Jevon Wormsley in fourth place on a short bike, just two and a half seconds back down the road. But these three, as Todd Ellis pops the sidecar wheel up on the curb, these three scrapping tooth and nail, and the Christies more than holding their own. Is there a manoeuvre here? Is Todd Ellis going to come out, go up the inside and go in on the brakes? Yes, he is, is the answer to that. Into his is flicks it left, flicks it right, flicks it left again, and look at that, up in front. He's the lap record holder here, 142.987, and uh, they're not yet there. They're a long way adrift of that, but uh, still a bit to do. Coming down then into his is over hilltop, that's such a popular place for the solos as well. But sidecars, of course, double the width, a bit more of the weight, 370 kilos gross weight, combined weight with rider passenger, the whole lot. So that's what they're limited to, minimum weight. That's what defines the GP class. And Kershaw now having a look at Sam and Tom Christie. I'm, I'm really impressed with the Christies. I said so all the way through last season, just how they'd improved how much they raised their game. Tom raised his game because he had a short spell with Chris Walker a couple of seasons ago, three seasons ago maybe. And then uh, when Adam was injured, he had no choice but to maintain the family tradition and jump in. By Riley Barry, um, with the Christies, it's, it's been a long time coming. They've always been there or thereabouts, but this weekend for me, they've really, really hit the, uh, hit the limit with what they've brought so far to the track. Well, look at number 72. Pete Founds and Jevon Wormsley are leading a bevy of long bikes. There it is. And where is it? There, George. That's George Holden in there. George Holden with Oscar Lawrence in the dark blue bike. 
That's amazing. Crawford and Lowther, of course. Number 171. There's George Holden on the left. There's Lee Crawford, 117, I beg your pardon. And there, Lewis Blackstock, Paddy Rosley, 95 on the new, brand new chassis on the 95 bike. Pretty, pretty much all LCRs. Uh, one or two Adolf RS, Rudy Schmidt bikes. Should have been a ride chassis here as well, but uh, Brian Gray reverted to the old LCR. The new bike was not quite ready. Pete found so. What a class act he is. It's truly an amazing job. I mean, obviously, we're all expecting Pete to go well at the TT. He himself is looking for the victory this year at the TT. He's really pushing on, and, of course, he's on the short chassis this weekend, trying to get those last few laps in a little bit more practice before he heads to the island in a couple of weeks. And then further down the road, we've got Martin Kirk. There, Phil Bell. I'm pretty sure that was Phil Bell. It wasn't Mick, was it? It was Phil Bell. There's Andy Peach. There's Kevin Cable. Charlie Richardson, the 111 bike in the LW blue and orange livery. And Rupert Archer and Adam Christie on the number 70 blue Hannafin bike. Kevin Cable going through on Andy Peach. Back at the front then, the Christ is still being chased by the Kershaw, but there, 143.6, a fastest lap, and that is about seven tenths off their lap record. 142.987, the lap record held by Ellis Clement, and there they are. The French lady passenger, and Todd Ellis, British, as Jed said, British and world, champions together in 2022 uh, that's unfortunate that's Rupert Archer and uh, Adam Christie there uh, look maybe the, those problems we spotted earlier Barry catching up with them perhaps let's have a look see what happens all oh, puff of smoke something's gone it's blown it's blown Rupert doing the right thing getting it straight to the grass that's a pity for him but at least uh, the other Christie brothers are out there in second place and fighting, and there they are, the number 34 crew, Sam and Tom Christie. On lap four of 12, uh, an extra two laps added. This was a scheduled 10 lap race, but because the weather encroached on proceedings yesterday here and uh, forced the organizers to abandon the final race of the day, it really was a uh, reign of biblical proportions and uh, the track was unrideable and of course we also ran out of time because there is a Sunday curfew here at Alton Park but we've got a race on our hands that's been well worth waiting for yeah, I've, uh, I've just spotted as well on the timing screens here, Barry. Uh, Lee Crawford and Jake Lowther seem to have hit some sort of issue or problem uh, in this previous lap. They've uh, they've dropped out of that battle uh, for fourth place. Pete founds Jevon Wormsley running wide and letting George Holden right on the back of them. So George Holden will have gained a bit and closed in on Pete Fowles and Jevon Wormsley. Morm the short bikes, of course, do not have the cornering prowess. They won't, they won't cling like these long bikes do, and we saw that vividly there. There's Kershaw, 29, he and Ryan Charlwood. All the way down, well, Kershaw from Lauder uh, on the borders. Todd Ellis now has got a 1.6 second gap. The number six race leaders as they came over the line that last time. Uh, looking for Pete Founds, is he still maintaining it? Andy Peach and Ken Edwards, number four, dropping back out of the running. Still a good, strong, well, with the exception of Tim Reeves, Rupert Archer, everybody's still running and a good, strong grip. So still 21 on track. And it'll be interesting when these outfits start to lap, of course, there isn't the room in certain places here at Alton Park. So when they come round and they're trying to get among the tail enders, it could be interesting. It can get quite narrow out there, Barry. Obviously, Alton Park is not really Silverstone out there in terms of track width. Uh, also, some very complicated corners, especially when you take into account the chicanes that we have here at Alton. Um, so it could get a little bit spicy, shall we say. Everyone, everyone looking so polished here. They feel really sorry for Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes. It's been a long, long weekend. They knew they had a mechanical problem. Kevin Cable moving up. And uh, let's see 
Lee Crawford also going back down the order. Number seven there, Brian Gray in the yellow and black. There's 17, Craig Clark. Craig Clark and Pete Enser in the number 17 bike. And that is an LCR with a Honda in it. Very few Honda engines. For some reason, the Yamaha seems to work better. It was very difficult with sidecars because the the, the G-force, the engine is thrown sideways and the oil tends to swash around in the sun. I don't want to get too technical. Whereas on a solo, everything stays in one plane and you do not get these oiling issues. But when you take a solo engine and put it into a sidecar, then uh, you can cause yourself problems. Let's see what Kershaw does on the back of Christie's here. The lap times, 143.71, so they're lapping virtually identical paces. But Ellis Clement now with a two, well, nearly a three second advantage over this pair. And the scrap ready on. We're looking on lap seven of 12, 143.263. That's coming down. Another fastest lap by Ellis Clement. They really are pushing on out front now, Barry. They've, uh, they've kind of turned into a one-horse race for themselves for the win, but uh, this battle for second here between uh, the Christie brothers and Steve Kershaw and Ryan Charwood really is uh, look like it's going to hot up in these final few laps now. I think it is, and uh, tyres, let's talk tyres just briefly. So the sole supplier of the tyres this series, Avon Motorsport, sadly will not be involved uh, next year. This is their final year due to changes in the circumstances of Avon, uh, its parent company now Goodyear has decided to to basically curtail the racing activity of Avon, so uh, we're in negotiations with alternative tyre suppliers for the coming seasons uh, difficult, uh, there are no specific sidecar race tyres built, we generally use something from the world of hill climbing or rallying, that's a fair statement isn't it? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who comes forth uh, to take up that slack and the, the sort of gap that the uh, Avon are leaving behind themselves. Um, but for sure, there, there will be someone to take up that slack for next year. Daryl Gibson, 75, and Reese Gibbon. Reese Gibbons, a hot hand in the air from John Holm. That is a brand new Christie Engineering outfit being sorted out for the TT. Daryl Gibson planning to go to the TT. Well, he is definitely going for his first Isle of Man TT this year, having passengered Molyneux last year on the KTM. So, son of Gary Gibson, two youngsters in there. Reese Gibbons, a very, very good passenger, has jumped in with one or two recently, but he is also the nephew of Pete Fowles. So, cycle racing tends to be a family thing, doesn't it, in many cases? It really does, Barry, it really does. You, uh, obviously, we, we see so many uh, links between families through through generations, not just siblings as well. You know, through, uh, obviously, the, for me, the biggest call out there is uh, Ryan and Callum Crow. Their father, obviously, a TT winner back in his time. So uh, there really is a, a strong, tenuous link between the families here. Yeah, I'm just having a look down the tiny screen to see whether they're, they're in 13th place. That is the gap back to fourth place. And this is the battle for second and third. So it, they're in a class of their own. They set brilliant times, the top three, as I said. Only two seconds, only 0.2 of a second between them. And then George Holden and Oscar Lawrence, the crew in your picture now, were next up qualifying fourth. There's Pete Founds. Pete Founds and Blackstock. So George Holden has made his way up to fourth. Pete Founds one behind, he's got Lewis Blackstock and Paddy Rosley on the express tyre services. Yamaha climbing all over the back of him. They've got a brand new chassis as well. So there's been some money spent in this paddock over the winter and it shows. Look how beautifully turned out everyone is. There's a lot of effort this year. It's clear to see Barry, you know, there's a lot of beautiful liveries out there, some fantastic leather designs and equally uh, beautiful helmet designs to go with them as well. Well, Lewis, Blackstock, Paddy Rosney with Pete Fowns, Jevon Walmsley on the short chassis. And for those of you not fully initiated into sidecar racing, the short chassis has the engine in front of the driver, basically under his chest, which is why the fairing is, is more of a hump at the front, it's higher. The engine is under his chest. The long bike you're looking at now, the engine is pretty much 
behind the driver and under the passenger when he leans over on right-handers. Uh, the purpose of that, of course, left and right as they move their way about, is to assist the driver in stability, grip, braking, and basically stop the outfit capsizing. And the long bikes corner quicker than the short bikes, but I'm, I'm blown away by the effort that Pete Fowns is putting in. Second place, the Christie's. Third place, Kershaw and Charwood. Looking at the second place bike now, and Steve Kershaw won't want to follow them all the way home, will he? Certainly not. We all know Steve's a fierce competitor, a gentleman on the outside, but when the crash hammer goes on, the visor comes down, he's as much of a competitor as anyone else on the circuit. So he really will be pushing to try and catch and overtake these Christie brothers. Well, whoever wins this race, and at the moment, Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement are in the pound seats, uh, will gain the 25 points. That's all they'll take away from Alton Park because there is just the one race. Kershaw having a look. And then uh, moving on, the next round will be in three weeks' time at Donington Park. And elsewhere on the BSB calendar, we go to Snetterton, we go to Thruxton, we go to Brands Hatch, and we have two other standalone uh, rounds as well, seven in total. And uh, I just wonder if maybe the BSB organisers can find it in their hearts to give us an extra race, possibly, to top up for the one we lost this weekend. But I'm not putting any money on it. <laughs> it certainly would be lovely, Barry, if we could squeeze an extra round in somewhere, or certainly an extra race, to be sure. But, uh, yeah, I'm not guaranteeing anything just yet. It's such a busy Superbike weekend. We've had some great solo racing here on the British Superbike. Uh, round two for them, of course, here at Alton Park. Great Superbike races. Everybody having a, a share of winning, which has been really, really good. And here we have Todd Ellis coming up behind what looks like Greg Lambert, the yellow bike. There it is, Greg Lambert, and there's the leader going past the first of the back markers. Greg Lambert, the number 69 bike, with Andy Haynes on board. Greg from Catterick, another TT exponent, another short bike, of course. And uh, as Jed said earlier, these guys with the short bikes are basically making sure that everything is OK before they go to the TT at the last week of May and the first week of June, which is Trilisha and Greg Lambert in the gravel. So Ian, he and Andy Haynes taking their bike out of the running, and that is a Honda LCR. Kershaw then, still with the Christies. Christies holding their own, lapping pretty much 44-2, 40. They are, they're just matching each other, lap after lap, with every turn of the wheel, and we are on the penultimate lap here. Is Steve Kershaw going to find a way past? Because up the road, five seconds is Todd Ellis. A little wide there from Christie. It looked like Steve may have the opportunity to chase him down as we come along the avenue there. But uh, I think uh, Sam's actually managed to save it quite well there. Well, next time round, they'll be starting their final lap. Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clement maintaining their winning streak from last season 11 victories they had last season and uh, when they didn't win they were on the podium in every other race they contested they had two rounds they didn't contest last year because they were away on world championship duty but they still won the British title which is an amazing feat and what a pair they are here we go then here goes Cashel up the inside he had a look certainly had a look Going into his is, that's a favourite overtaking spot. The next chance and the only chance he's got is at Lodge when they come round. Maybe Druids, but I would say Lodge. I don't think he's going to get a chance at Clay Hill. Here we go. Looking good. Kershaw is right there. He's close, round they go to Druids, over the undulations, up towards Lodge. Todd Ellis just vanishing out of the picture. Here goes Steve Kershaw, it's now or never time. Can he get it stopped? Can he get it turned? Yes is the answer to that. Steve Kershaw, Ryan Charwood then, moving the Quattro Yamaha into second place on the podium, ahead of Sam and Tom Christie, and it's into the final lap then. Can they sustain it? Brilliant stuff. What a move. I think so now. I think uh, Steve looks like he's just been sat, sat there for the last few laps now. And uh, he, he looks like he's absolutely pulled the pin already. Look at that gap just building, Barry. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's done. 
it's done barring a problem for Stephen uh, Stephen Ryan there in second place I think that's uh, second place secured for those guys well a brilliant brilliant ride by Ellis Clement 143.263 on their final lap now they were just marginally three tenths of a second outside their own lap record I thought conditions were looking good and because it's been so wet there'll have been no rubber laid down either it's uh, it's new in the season early in the year there's been no rubber laid down over the last two days at all because it's been damped so they've done pretty well I would say certainly and let's not forget as well Barry it's been almost 48 hours since these guys have been on track as well so uh, there's also that to take into account yep yeah, yeah um, no doubt the, the odd beer might have been consumed between uh, Friday and now because there's an awful lot of sitting around to do and you saw Mick Bell there number number eight brother of Phil Bell younger brother the Bell family again another dynasty synonymous with sidecar racing but Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement his French lady passenger such a dedicated passenger she is and we haven't seen a great deal of them in this race because they've been out in front and doing the winning and heading for the checkered flag and taking it in great style Steve Kershaw Ryan Charwood then bring it home in second and Sam and Tom Christie complete the podium fourth place it's going to be for George Holden and Oscar Lawrence they're on a 636 Kawasaki uh, which is um, allowed because it's running the British Super, super Sport uh, rules basically the large engines are allowed in and Pete Fowles is going to hold on ahead of Lewis Blackstock and Paddy Rosney and that is a very very creditable performance indeed so he wins the F2 Cup Championship points the maximum Simon Robinson there behind Martin Kirk so Martin Kirk good to see him back he and Kyle Masters on the black outfit number 58 and Simon Robinson Mick Fairhurst number 19 following them home Martin Kirk having made it past Simon Robinson so that is a good result for Kirky good battles all the way down the field Paul and Tom Kirby next up here they are the 27 crew no relation not brothers but uh, getting them getting themselves really really sorted out for the 2023 season but race winners Todd Ellis Emmanuel Clement Supreme and do you know there's even some blue sky wonderful wonderful average speed 92.74 and just a fraction of equaling their own lap record brilliant stuff well your baptism of fire, Jed, as uh, co-commentary. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> I loved it. If uh, if some were absolutely nerve-wracking, Barry, I, I can't lie with that one. <laughs> well, you never get used to that bit, I can tell you. But it was great, great racing and uh, a good fight by Kershaw. He did, uh, you, you were quite right. He kept his powder dry and did what he had to do, but... Um, saved it till late in the race but there was no holding Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clermont victory here in the one and only race but it kickstarts the 2023 Molson Group British Sidecar Championship there it is confirmed then the gap 4.8 at the end they backed off a bit Ellis Clement from Kershaw Charwood Christie's that is the podium you saw the guys in the winner's circle Holden and Lawrence founds immense performance top F2 and then we have to go all the way down to eighth place for Robinson and Fairhurst claiming the cup victory and that is long bikes but a heavier minimum weight due to the fact they probably don't have magnesium wheels and some of the really light stuff another f2 there daryl gibson second in the f2 race so that was brilliant for them phil bell car bell cut there so further down the order fewer gp bikes as you would expect they tend to be at the top crow boys will be pleased with that but it's a long trip from the isle of man for just one race lambert holden well we saw them retire and uh, there you go 
Great though, good, good race and a good way to start the 2023 season.